Hey guys, what is up? It's Total Eclipse here, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the logic gates in Fallout 4, and one possible way in which you can use them on a factory build. Now I hear you asking, why use logic gates? They're just overly complex and you, you can't seem to get much out of them. Now this is simply because they allow you to create detailed instructions for a given circuit. Now I'm no expert, but what I have learnt, um, I've learnt a few bits and pieces which I wanted to share with you in this video. Now if you guys do have any cool ideas that you'd like me to try out with the, the new logic gates, then do let me know in the comment section below and maybe I'll actually try and develop the idea for you. Anyway, let's get to the video. So what I've done here is um, create a factory that allows me to produce three different types of ammunition with the flick of a switch. Now this is due to some pre-planning and a, a handful of simple logic gates. Now these may seem quite daunting but I'm going to try and explain how they work as quickly and as easy as possible to take in. Now each logic gate has an input on the left hand side which is in red and a output which is on the right hand side and that's coloured in black. Now in order for the logic gates to work you need to attach two power sources to the input. Now these can be a mix of switches or even generators, just place them into the input. And then you need one wire leading to your intended item from the output such as a light which we will show in this video or even a machine which I'll show you later on. The first one we have is the AND gate, which requires both inputs to be powered in order for power to proceed to the selected item. So, for example, you put two generators to that logic gate, and then you will get one power out. If you have one generator on and one off, you won't get any power through to it. Then we have the OR gate, which requires a single input to activate the given um, light or machine. Now, as you can see here, you can actually use both inputs being turned on to work as well. Uh, it will work just fine, unlike the XOR gate, which we're going on to now. The XOR gate requires only one input to activate uh, the selected item, but it won't work if both inputs are the same, aka both on or even both off. So, to start off, Place a wall with the three logic gates followed by two switched pylons which will be connected to the power supply. If you're planning on creating a factory using these I highly recommend you build a control centre. So this being your control centre and then you lead the, the machinery from here. Now the next thing you need to place is three lights. Once you've put the output to the selected lights uh, you can quite easily see how the logic gates are going to work. So for my factory build I connected the logic gates directly to the vacuum hoppers but there's nothing to stop you from experimenting with the gates and adding on uh, whole factory lines or you could even experiment with adding on extra logic gates to logic gates in order to do different um, calculations. Now for this factory build I used a mixture of levels alongside forked conveyor belts which also had dividers in order to create a player made kind of hopper. I've spoken about this before in a previous video, I just found it much more space efficient to use player made hoppers uh, using conveyors rather than the big hoppers themselves. Uh, you also don't get problems with uh, the hopper trying to get too many items out at once. Now with this build I'm able to create three different types of ammunition with three different switches. Uh, this is quite useful if you're going to be doing survival gameplay, gameplay but you have plenty of resources available. Uh, it's also great fun to play around with. It did take me a bit of tinkering along with the, the circuits because you have to have the computers on different uh, machine circuits. Uh, so each machinery um, ammunition plant had to be powered by a different generator. Uh, so that's something you might need to bear in mind if your machines aren't working when you've got it all set and uh, running. Now unfortunately that is all we have time for in this video. If you do want to see an, a build of how I actually built this factory I will redo another video for you on how everything was placed and how like the logic behind it. Now, 
I do hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, if you did, please drop a thumbs up. It really is appreciated. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me below. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.